So I'm going to go to a new document. And I'm going to tab over to the, the Proving Ground tab. Once you have Conduit installed, you'll see that you'll have a Proving Ground tab in Grasshopper. And then you'll see this category uh, for HUD, which, we, which is the abbreviation for Heads Up Display. Um, if I expand that category, you'll see that we have a wide variety of components, both to aid in the layout of a Heads Up Display, uh, the population of a Heads Up Display with charting elements. We can uh, populate um, some some elements related to meshes and lines and text. Um, we can define color palettes and style styling uh, sheets uh, that let us you know, more directly and accurately and uh, control the kind of look and feel of the heads-up display and then finally we have the component to publish to the heads-up display. So the, the workflow I like to kind of define right from the get-go um, is to first begin with my heads-up display. This is kind of the end point for all of the widgets um, that we're going to be working with here in Conduit. So we know we're going to need a heads-up display component on our canvas. If I zoom into this component, you can see that there are a couple of inputs that are critical. And we have a toggle for showing or hiding the heads-up display. We have the various objects we want to draw and project to our viewport. And then we have the boundary of our heads-up display. So the first input's quite simple. We can you know, just create a simple Boolean toggle for showing or hiding that heads up display. So I'm just going to grab a Boolean toggle and connect that in. And I'm just going to set that to true. Next, we have drawing objects. We haven't really defined any drawing objects yet. So we might um, maybe just start out with one um, and pull one to our canvas to, to get things going. So I'm just going to go to the Proving Ground tab again, expand this, and I'm going to define a conduit chart. And clearly there's a far more intimidating set of inputs that we'll want to, to populate later. But for right now, I'm going to um, just take the draw objects connection and plug that into draw objects. There's clearly no data going through here. Both components are orange. If I go back to the heads up display, we now need to find our boundaries, right? We need to find like what are the boundaries of our um, dashboard that we're going to be building. Um, Typically, when you're working with Conduit, you're going to want to define the boundary relative to your viewport. Um, so we need a way to kind of get the viewport dimensions. So if I go to Proving Ground Heads Up Display, you can see that there is a component there for defining our viewport boundary. And what this is going to do is it's going to reach into Rhino. It's going to find the dimensions of the current viewport boundary, and it's going to kind of uh, populate Grasshopper with a rectangle. Um, that rectangle becomes drawn inside of Rhino so we can kind of see how it's being set up there. Um, there are a couple of inputs here for controlling the refresh of these dimensions. By default it's set to true. We can set the origin if we wanted to kind of relocate this sort of boundary somewhere else on in our model we could. Um, and there's some, some scale factors there. Uh, for all intents and purposes, if you're just getting set up, you can just use this component directly with very, you know, very minimal setup. You don't really need to modify anything. You can just connect that component right into the bounds input of the heads up display. So now that we have the overall boundary, uh, kind of defining our heads up display, and we have the start of a widget, we can now start to fill in the gap here, right? So if I can go in here, I, I might want to start to subdivide these boundaries into an actual grid so I can start to kind of graphically lay out this, this heads up display that I'm, I'm, I'm building up. And we've got a couple of tools in Conduit to help us do that. You can see that we've got a series of tiling components, which will take an overall boundary and then subdivide those boundaries into tiles. So if we wanted to create a grid, um, if we wanted to create you know, a regular grid or just some vertical tiles or some horizontal tiles, uh, those are all uh, available here in the, the tiling section. I'm just going to grab a set of vertical tiles We're gonna, and keep it simple. We're going to create a series of, of tiles that exist um, kind of vertically within this and we'll see how this populates by connecting the 
the the bounds output of our overall viewport boundary into the bounds input of the tile and what you'll see is that uh, that is automatically creating a series of three tiles um, oriented vertically like a column in this in this master boundary and we can now start adjusting the dimensions here um, we can start to calibrate how this is kind of arranged. You can see that we've got some sizing input, so it's generating three tiles. Uh, you can see if I hover over a relative size, I've got three values in there, one, one, and one. And what this allows us to do, it's kind of all based on proportion. So I can feed in any list of values that I want. And just based on how these values are different from each other, it will proportionally arrange the the, the size of these. So I'm going to go to the params tab and a quick way to get a sense of how this actually works is to go to your t utility um, and we can kind of use the Galapagos uh, gene pool uh, tool as a quick way of generating multiple sliders. Uh, that's kind of like a, a hacky workaround than you know just copying and pasting multiple you know uh, sliders as usual. We can just grab a gene pool and find that we've got you know 10 uh, sliders have automatically calibrated for us and if I connect those into relative size you'll see that we've got now um, you know, 10 tiles that we could kind of populate with some content and if I start to adjust um, any of these um, values here you can see that it's proportionally um, modifying and scaling all of those tiles accordingly. Uh, for right now I'm just going to double click and I'm going to change this from 10 back to 3 so now you can kind of see I'm kind of arranging three tiles along the edge there. I'm now going to grab a slider to control the width. So you can see I've got my uh, slider here just from zero to one. Again, like kind of arranging this is kind of based on proportions. If, if I go and connect this slider in to the width um, and set this to 0.5, that will be half the viewport dimension if I go to 0.25. That'll be a quarter, uh, and so on. We can use a similar principle to control things like the padding of this tile, right? So I can get in here and um, kind of adjust how these are being padded relative to the overall dimension. I can give it some space around the viewport. I do the same for height, so there's a little bit of a, a gap between those tiles. You can kind of see how that's kind of working now. It's a nice kind of way to just parametrically define a quick a quick grid and layout grid for us.